Hello, so it's Lots Trains, and welcome back to Layer Wet. And today we're going to be looking at a Hornby railroad locomotive. I hope you enjoy the video, and let's get this review started then. So, yeah, today, guys, um, obviously, I am recording this early hours in the morning, so I'm, I'm not having flight faff about later on today. Um, so that's the reason why I'm being a bit quiet because obviously I've got neighbours and I've got my girlfriends and sleeping out and everything like that. Um, but I'm going to say now, I do apologise that I didn't post anything Sunday. I'll be honest with you, like, I completely forgot, but then again, I have been busy on my layout as I'm going to show you later on when I get this locomotive up and running. <coughs> and it's none other than the Jinty, what I got from the uh, Model Railway show back in November. I know that I said that I've been. I've been wanting to review this one for quite some time now and obviously I, have, I haven't been able to because obviously I ended up sick and then Christmas came around and then I ended up sick again and it was just all mixed batch to be honest with you but obviously I have been asked for an LMS Jinty for a long time and believe it or not I was actually after one of these particular ones with the maroon finish on it so we're going to enough me off the front. Obviously, there's nothing at the back of the box. I'm just about to show you that now. And that's just reminding me the price I paid for this was 29 quid. If you can see there, I paid 29 pounds for this one. So, obviously, I've had this one out and it does, it runs and, um, and stuff like that. So, the first thing we're going to look at is the instructions. So, I'm going to just build the box down there. And I don't, I think it's DCC ready. I'm not quite sure. I hope this is the instructions and I'm just, you know, pulled out a bit of paper. Oh, here it is. So, obviously it doesn't tell you really much about DCC fitting with this one, but you can actually buy the motor when you can actually DCC fit an O6R. Because I've seen LaserJet do it and a few other YouTubers do it. All this is showing you really is just how to remove the motor and how to remove the body, which I've done countless times because I've got an actual weird story to tell you about this locomotive, believe it or not. Um, when I actually got this model, it was actually broken. Nothing too serious, what I couldn't really fix on my own. It was just one of the steps was obviously off. So I had to obviously get a, another step off a locomo locomotive. I was bung, bung it back on. Now, there is a detail pack in here, but for some reason, whoever owned this last has stopped right in this hole right here. And what a surprise, it's just the typical things what you get with an O6. So, there's a little figurines and some, uh, I think they call vacuum pipes. So, I possibly will fit those to the model to make it look more presentable. Come on. Right then, so let's chuck the box to one side, and as you can see, here's the Jinty. Obviously, it is just a basic model, which it is a railroad locomotive, and that's the reason why I'm not complaining about the price. Um, I'm trying to figure out what step it was, what I fixed. It was this one, because if you look carefully, you can sort of see the like bit of sloppy in the paintwork. But I got a step off a spare locomotive. I can't remember what locomotive it were. And I just bummed it on there. So, uh, a bit of history about the Jinty now then. <laughs> I've got my iPad here. Right then, so, when it unlocks. Okay, well, I'll have to put my postcode in. Right then, so, the first type of this class of locomotive was, so, oh, it wasn't. Yeah, the first number I think I think it says was seven one one seven hundred seven one hundred which was later renumbered to seven two six zero and it was built in nineteen twenty four at the Volk Vulcan Fat Foundry in Newton Lee Willows in Lan Lancashire. The the design the design of the class was based upon rebuilds of the Midland Railway 2441 class by Henry Fowler. So it's basically, I think it's basically built off like the uh, Midland uh, locomotive. I can't think which one that is. But yeah, it's a, it's a nice lo locomotive, like I said. 
just wondering what a bang was then, guys. Um, but obviously, there's not really that much detail on this, which you kind of expect of a lot locomotive at this price. So obviously, I'm going to take up onto the detail table now then, and then we're going to look at it, some of its details, what it's got on it. And then I'm going to show you the mechanism. Obviously, I might wait first before I show you the mechanism. And then we're going to run it. So I'll see you up on the detail table then, guys. I'll talk to you in a bit. Right then. Right then, guys. So as you can see, the gent is on the detail table. In fact, one minute. Does it this one pretty things? Yes, it does. Right, basically what I've done there, guys, is just put, plugged in my layout so the lights are on now so you can actually see the locomotive a lot better, if you know what I'm saying. So anyway, as I was, as I was saying, um, the locomotive is up on the, the detail table now, as you can sort of see. Well, so you can see it more than that. And the first thing we're going to look at, like we always look at, is the front of the locomotive. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. And then obviously, as you expect with a railroad locomotive, you've got no spoon buffers, you've got no NEM pockets or anything like that, you've got no, like, you know... That's what you say, you're like, guys. You've got, like, no separately hand rails or anything like that on the front, which is understandable. But then as we continue down the model, that's where the detail really stands in. Why is it every time I do a video, I'm all sneezing. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, it's got the LMS down the side. And then it's got the steps, which is obvious. Obviously, you've got the wheels, which I'm glad that this one has got a traction tyre on it, to be honest with you. Because I can't stand traction tyres. Um, it's got the running number at the back. It's got the valve gear and the whistles, the dome, the funnel, etc. The back's not really that detailed either. The back is just basic. Again, I'm not going to complain too much because obviously I didn't really pay that much for the model anyway. So, but um, the other side is the same, pretty much as the front. But one thing I do like about this locomotive is the fact that it's got an open cab, which not many O6s have got if you look closely. But another thing I've just um, realised is that it's got like some sort of pump around here. In fact, if I zoom in, As you can see, here look, it's got like a little pump on there, which I think is really, really interesting to be honest with you. Right then, so obviously we, we'll just look to the detail now then. So, obviously the other thing what we're going to look, look at now is how much does this locomotive weigh? Which I'm not expecting it to say like a massive result or anything like that to be honest with you. But, hey ho. Right, so just turn the weight scales on now. On this side to, yeah, there we go. And then I'm just popping the locomotive on. And it's 316. And I'm just going to lift you up slightly so you can see it. Oops. As you can see, there you go. So, it's a pretty light locomotive, to be honest with you. So, what we're going to do now, then, is we're going to look at the mechanism now. Which, I'm going to stop the video here. Excuse me. And then we're going to look at the, the uh, mechanism as well. So I'll talk to you in a bit then, guys. Right then, guys. So as you can see, I've I've um, undone the mechanism. As you can sort of see, it's just a basic motor. And also, as you can see, yeah, it's got pickups if you look closely. It's got those wiper pickups. And as far as I'm aware, they're, they're asked for ma bearing inside, not ba bearings or whatever I was going to say. Um, on the wheel set itself and as you can see there's the gear what drives the model so I'm not going to obviously take it all apart because I then again I know I'll pay 29 quid for this but still it, it is one of my models at the end of the day and if you're wondering how to get the body off if I'll just show you in fact let me just zoom out a little bit more all you have to do is that there's like a little nut um like a little hole here. All you have to do is get like a small screwdriver, something like this, and then you just have to push it out. So then it actually does, you know, pop out. In fact, I'll show you how to put it back together if I can. So. Right, 
Okay, but guys, maybe not. I'm not going to be able to show you how to put it back together. But you sort of get the idea. There's two lugs at the front, what go into the body, and then you just have to somehow press that down, but the, the thingy bit at the end just like stick out a little bit. But I will sort that out, and I'll get up and lay out, and then we'll have a running session with it. All right, then, I'll talk to you a bit then, guys. Well, then, guys, so before I actually obviously show you... Um, I'll, before I show you like the running session or anything like that, I'm, I did say the other day, well, the other week, sorry, that I was going to show my viaducts off, like my local lot is running across the viaducts, um, if you remember, which I am going to do now, but um, if my journey don't work, then I will try another locomotive, like a short wheel based, basically. So obviously, as you can see, there's my viaduct there, and I will take you around with it as well. So, wrong way, Jenny. Fat one, you guys. Yeah, probably in there. I'm just the truck on the line, guys. That's the reason why I just had to shift it. Right then, so we're going to take Jenny nice and slow. And as you can see, well, obviously, you'd expect it to run on this bit fine. But like I said, if GT doesn't work, then I'll, I will we'll just get like a wheel, shot a wheel based locomotive to go on it, as as proven right there. Oops. So what I'll do is I'll possibly have GT on like the um, either the middle line or something like that, because obviously I've got Black Five running as well. Um, so obviously, yeah. In fact, what I'll do. Because obviously, I did promise you guys that I was going to show you fully. Is I'll try my um, Terrier. Because I know for a fact, because the wheelbase is so sh short on that, it does actually work. So, as you can see, there goes the Terrier. I, I do apologise that this one's loud. I have strongly considered changing the motor on this because it's just that loud. But as you can see, Terrier's going up. As you can see at the minute, it comes racing down without an issue. So that's my viaducts, and in fact, I'm going to leave um, my Terry on there so I can actually have him up and running. Yeah, in fact, so I'll have one Terry instead of um, instead of the Black Five today, and I'll just have the Black Five in the car in the side, and I'll something like that. Oops. <laughs> Sorry guys that I'm taking so long, I'm just trying to get the train ready for the gym here. Right then, so back to the review then. So what we're going to do now then is, obviously we're back on the journey now. And again, I do apologise for the mess, but I am getting ready to start my turntable very, very soon. So that's the reason why my layout is kind of upside down at the minute. But then again, you guys kind of know that anyway. So obviously I'm going to just ease my journey up now. And as you can see, that's only on three. And I'm not joking. To say that my K1 couldn't even perform like that. That is quite good actually. For a railroad locomotive as well. But that that is impressive to be honest with you guys. But I know as soon as it gets to like as soon as it gets to like a point or something, it's just gonna stop. So I'll just reverse it back. Is it done maybe? Yeah. So he's he's an when it gets nearly crossing there. So I mean slow speeds might be getting a good score today to say that it's you know doing the way doing it the way it is. So So yeah. Um, what we're going to do then is we're going to have a little bit of a running session now then and then obviously as I'll just be sort of saying we're going to have the Terry run instead of the Black 5 um, because obviously 
My Black 5 is tender driven, it's very strip powerful. So, obviously, if people are right with it, I've got the Jinty on and I've got the Terry on. So, go on then, Jinty. So, there goes the Jinty. At a reasonable speed, so that's good train speed. And then, obviously, the other one we've just been talking about is the Jinty. As you can see, the Black 5 is just in the corner there. For some reason, the Jinty stopped. Hmm. Right, so, so we're going to get the Terry up and going. And by the way, the Terry will be going up and down the viaducts as well. So, so enjoy the running session then, guys. Obviously, I'm going to put you on different camera angles today as well, because obviously my layout is a mess. As you can see, it's just on a full lap. I'm sorry, one didn't it? So that's... That's pretty good, to be honest with you. That they're both just doing a complete lap without an issue. And as you can see, they're going to do the Terry again. Going up. And then going down the hill. I wonder where the Jinty went. Why does it keep stopping there? Right, it's big up a little bit more. Right, it's right here. In fact, I'm not gonna lie, guys. I'm not, I am actually considering changing my mentalia. That noise is just doing my head in. Oh, boy, it's quite the lowest noise. Right, I'm just gonna leave you here for a minute, guys. There we are. I've put a little off on guys and I've got like the cinema and call like the Jenny, so that'll do for today. I've just got that in a little cafe with modern calls. And by the way, if you wonder what where Tim Sheds is. It's right there, so it is so good. Oh, look at this shot, guys. Oh, that was quite cool. Grab that got on camera. Right then, so we'll let the duty have one more lap. And then we'll do scores for him. Oh, hey. But yeah guys, I've had to change a lot of stuff on my layout since the last time you saw it. So anyway, we're just going to crouch down and then just get ready to hit the emergency button. So, and then the little awful can say there. Right then, so the scores for the Jinty. So, um, detail, I would definitely give that at least about a 4 out of 5 because there's a, quite a fair bit of detail on it. But it's not, you know, hush hush standards or... Um, the KL1, K1 standards, if you're all the even Oxford Rail N7 standards, so about 4 out of 5 for detail. Performance, I'll definitely give that a 5 out of 5 because the performance on it was just fantastic. Like, it didn't do well, but, well, obviously, possibly down to the fact that I've actually sorted this little bit of track out here. Um, but performance was really good with this one. Um, what else is there? Mechanism, I don't know to be honest with you, like guys, I would definitely give the mechanism like about like a three out of five. Like, yeah, it's a good mechanism, don't get me wrong, right? But we've seen so many up to date technology nowadays, and it's only models like this that they hardly or anybody else hasn't really done. If you not say like the motors or anything like that, the motors have stayed the same in like every single gin, like gin or 06 or chassis because they're a bit basic really aren't they so i would definitely say about like three out of five for mechanism um what else was there v value for money i would definitely again i'll give that five out of five because value for money for this i would pay 29 quid for this yet 
Yeah, fair enough. I might not be, you know, and that's another reason why I'm possibly knocking off the uh, score for the detail as well because of the step, what I have to fix up. Oh, yeah, quality as well. I need to mention data as well. Um, but value for money, I would definitely give that like at least about a five out of five because 29 quid for one of these, they usually go for like 50 quid on eBay. And I think that's wrong, to be honest with you. So that's my opinion though, but quality, that's definitely going to be the lowest, to be honest with you, because it's not really, you know, I know it's not a big deal for some people, but when I noticed it, it did kind of wind me up, to be honest with you, but I'll definitely give that like, I don't know, a 3.5 out of 5, if you know what I'm saying, because you, when you get a model, whether it's from a show or whatever, you shouldn't have to be fixing models mainly the steps and I've always said this if the running boards from Hornby was um, die cast instead of plastic the um, steps wouldn't break off as easy and that's the reason why like that or throw there the reason why those last for so long is because they've got die cast running boards so if they can do it for, for a little low for like that I'm not, not disagreeing Try to disrespect home because I do appreciate everything they do for for us as our hobby. But put start putting like die cast running bars on your gin is because if if the the uh, even if it's not a gin, even if it's like I don't know one of the newer models, um, like the oh 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 shouldn't it? like you they boost the price up a, a bit, but the dots seem to understand that. If you're going to pay like 100 or quid or, or nearly 200 quid for an no, oh it a class oh eight, shouldn't it? You're going to want the full detail, aren't you, really? Like die cast running bar, possibly die cast boiler, like everything like that. And that's what really bugs me. But quality is getting definitely getting a 3.5 out of 5 for me because of that step and because if the uh, like, again, I know it's a basic model and I understand that, but to be honest with you, like, we've seen better. Like, look at when I got the um, Octave Rail. I mean, even down to the Batman Thomas standards. I mean, if I'll just show you, because I've got my Batman Thomas here, believe it or not. If I'll just show you quickly, right, look at how strong Thomas's steps are. Like, look, if, you, if I can somehow show you, there you are. They only bend like ever so slightly. Get the gin is. And they're just like really, really flimsy. Like if I could get get in in a shot. Like I mean yeah, fair enough. I know, I understand that's how you like, you know, cut costs and stuff like that, but if Hornby is going to, like, you know, increase their prices on their new newest models. They need to start putting some more die casts on the, the actual models, if you know what I'm saying. But anyway, enough of me rambling on now. I'm going to get... I'm, I might let Evgenti have a few laps on her own. Because obviously you've seen the viaducts now, guys. So, and, I, and when I get another Thomas character, I will have Thomas going up it with Van, possibly with Annie and Claire Ball, some trucks. I don't know yet. Oh, yeah. We'll let her have one more lap after this and then we'll call it a day with this video. The, as you can see, there's a the black five there in the car and then there's Murdoch for some reason in my tunnel. Oh, yeah, because I was winning him the other day. So yeah, I'm gonna stop her when she comes back round. Right then, so we're just gonna stop her now then. And I'm gonna flip the camera back round and I'm gonna thank you for watching. Well, I can put my camera down. Uh, I'll talk to you a bit then, guys. Right then, guys, uh, thank you for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I do apologize that I was being a bit, you know, um, neglect negative near the end but at the end of the day like as i've sort of been saying i felt like it was justified because at the end of the day like when you're paying what you pay on it even down to like i've seen ones on ebay with broken steps and even 
simple things like broken safety valves and whatever else and I think it's disgusting and I mean even down to this one that's got a plastic running board and so was um okay one what I got last week those two I've got running plastic running bars I well between me, me and my girlfriend all together from a from a hush hush it was 240 quid roughly and then from a K1 it was 140 quid but then like I keep saying you get ones from Oxford Rail like this which is the N7 by the way and I only pay 99 quid for this even down to ones like I don't know even down to ones like this the N scale, well, 009 uh, scale lowy. That's die for the die cast as well. So it just begs the question, like, obviously with the news coming out with Hornby yesterday, which I am looking forward to a, few, a lot of the stuff, what they're going to be bringing out. It just begs the question, like, what have they actually got up the sleeve for this year? For obviously for us people who are into the hobby. I mean, will I be getting any of Hornby's newest products this year? Possibly. Um, and I don't know if I said this in my New Year's video, but one thing I do want to do this year, and that's go fully DCC with my layout, but I just don't know what controllers to go, to go for. Because I've tried with this one, what I've got, and for some reason, I've tried my mind on it, read, read the booklet, everything like that, and every time I try, like, you know, even move my TTS on my lad, it does want me. So I'm just hoping that I can somehow possibly get like some advice. And by the way, if you wonder what the controller is, I think I showed this before, but it does in case I haven't, I will show it again. And I'll put all the paperwork back in. If you wonder what the controller is, it's that. So if anyone can help me like figure out how to do DCC, like do I need to buy their chips? Which I don't really want to re-chip my mallard if it's already being chipped by Hornby. Especially if it's got sound on it. If it was like, I don't know, something like my Penn Luna, I would do that, not a problem. But, but yeah. Um, what's going to be coming out next? I don't know, to be honest with you. Um, but, oh yeah. Um, if you guys want me to start my live stream soon on a Sunday, not this Sunday, but like say a couple of more Sundays from now, then let me know down in the comments below and I will start them really soon if you want me to. And like I said in my last video, my first live um, stream will be me reacting to Tiger Moths, Project Tiger Moths um, episode of Top of the gauge one thomas and um and obviously in the live stream if you want thomas to sit with us he can do i'll find him a place on the chair and i'll have him like put up next to me like this and then we'll watch the stream together or something like that um and i, and I know that i said this before but please can someone comment on my videos saying what which episode they would rather watch dub, dub sorry would would they rather me watch would they rather me watch the us dub or the uk dub if you want me to do both i can do um and another thing I, i'm considering and doing on that uh, live stream as well and that's going to be some request videos for you all as well so it get like i said if you want me to start my live stream soon sorry let me know down in the comments below and I will take that on board and then I will, you know, figure out a time um, a time and how to do it, if you know what I'm saying. Um, I think roughly the time what I want to start on will probably be about between 12 and 1 o'clock maybe. I, I haven't decided fully yet, but it will be, be the afternoon, it won't be the morning. Because obviously on a Sunday I do like to get my lays sometimes. But um yeah. So if you want me to start my live stream soon, not this Sunday, but possibly next Sunday, then let me know down in the comments below, please. Um and another thing, let me know down down in the comments below if you want me to react to the UK dub or the US dub or both. 
and then see which one I prefer at the end, if you know what I'm saying. So, yeah, uh, a couple of things to look forward to. Um, as for what's coming out next, I think, if I'm correct, I've only got one loco more locomotive to review from um, that train show. In fact, that's in front of me. Apparently. So, yeah, um, I really enjoyed this video, to be honest with you, guys. I'm so glad that I've got my uh, viaduct set up. It's not finished yet. I'm not rushing it just for it to look rubbish in the end. Um, I'm taking my time with it to make it look like the actual uh, viaduct from the episode. Hence the reason why the viaduct is grey instead of the red, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. So, yeah. So, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, please like this video. Please comment down below what I've just been like explaining to you. And I guess I'll see you on Friday, possibly, with that um, last review, what I got on in November, which is the Flying Scotsman, believe it or not. So we've got that to look forward to on Sunday. So like I said, take care, everyone. Keep, keep, keep yourself safe out there. And I guess I'll see you like, like next time with another video. All right, take care, everyone. Bye.